Panthers catch and shoot. Is he feeling it? Yes. There it is! Got a piece of that. Snap three. 18 in the quarter. Curry. From half court. It's gone! He breaks it in! <laughs> he waved it to the wrong guy. Here's Curry. What's up guys, it's your boy JBT back with another BAM! And today, we got a build that is so slept on and overpowered. I don't know how we could be this far into the game without it getting at least some notice. But let's check out this clip real quick and keep in mind, this build isn't even made for defense. We're talking about a guard that's only 6'6". And check this out, this dude's coming out here to the paint with some weak layup temp and we're sending that back all the way down the court. Just look how far we sent that ball back, bro. Next possession, literally the next possession. I'm gonna fast forward for you guys, but his teammate clearly didn't get the memo coming in here with that weak shit. Get that garbage out of here, man. What are you doing? We're sending that ball right back where it belongs two times. And look, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'm not gonna tell you that you're gonna be AD out here averaging three blocks a game if you make this build. But what I will say is I'm using this build. I got nearly a 91%. I'm averaging a steal a game and my three point percentage is insane. All right, so we're gonna get straight into the Steph Curry demigod build, but make sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss some of the other sick content I'm gonna be dropping. Also, while you're down there, you might as well take a few seconds to drop a like because it really helps me out. All right, so the only important thing here is really position point guard numbers, preference, uh, handed is preference. Your name is obviously preference. So just make sure you're a point guard. All right So starting off with the pie chart and if we are talking about a dominant Steph build We obviously need to be able to shoot from anywhere. I'm talking about fading from half shooting over double teams We want to be able to make everything Consistently just like Steph. So to do this we're picking the most shooting pie chart for our physicals, we don't care about strength or vertical because this guard doesn't really need that and those are two things that Steph lacks. Instead, we are going to want to be fast and agile, so selecting the first pie chart for the physicals definitely makes the most sense, so go ahead and do that. For the attributes, we're going to want to leave close shot alone for now, put driving lamp at a 50 55 driving dunk you're going to want to put a 41 and that's an important number because having your driving dunk at a 41 allows you to finish dunks in traffic consistently standing dunk don't touch it you're not going to be able to do a standing dunk either way and post hooks don't touch it we're not going to be posting up on this build what a surprise moving on to shooting we're going to want to max our mid-range shot match our three-point shot max your free throw and then upgrade our post fade until we get it to an 86 if you drop it any lower than 86 you will lose a shooting badge as of now we have the most shooting badges you could possibly have in the entire game at 30 for the playmaking you're going to want to put pass accuracy at an 84 ball handle at a 78 and post moves at a 61 this will give us 15 playmaking badges and a high enough ball control to unlock pro dribble moves and do basically any drill move in the entire game for your defense and rebounding badges, you're going to leave interior defense alone for now. We're going to want to max out perimeter defense, max out your lateral quickness, max your steal, max your block, and then put offensive rebound at a 45, and then max defensive rebounds all the way. As you can see, this is going to give you 10 defensive badges and a total of 56 badges overall. I know a lot of you guys may be thinking Steph doesn't have 10 defensive badges in real life. He probably has more like 10 slashing badges and maybe one defensive badge. And that's true, but if you want the best build as possible, I would strongly recommend doing this because 10 defensive badges are so important in a comp game and you will still be able to make contested layups just like Steph using this build. Trust me, I had it as a 99 and I've been using it for a long time. For body type, it's really just preference. If you want to be exactly like Steph, probably go with slight. I just like making my player built. Doesn't really make a difference, so just do what you want with it. For height, you're going to want to go with 6 
6. Yes, I know Steph is 6'3 in real life, but going 6'6 six, six gives you the height to shoot over smaller guards. If you've got a slower player on you, like a center, you are definitely going to be quick enough to get into the paint or create enough space and get yourself an open 3. Also, going 6'6 six, six makes it so you can switch onto almost any build and still hold your own, even grab rebounds with your 75 defensive rebound rating. So I would highly recommend going with 6'6. Six, six the weight we're going to want to go with 182 pounds this will bring our acceleration up by three points for our wingspan the best wingspan by far is to drop it by two ticks down to 80.9 this will give us the highest three point rating in the game as well as the highest mid range you could possibly have you will barely lose any of your defensive stats any lower than this there's really no point because your shooting won't get any better and you are just tanking your defensive stats for our takeover, this was an obvious choice for me. We have two options, sharpshooting or shot creating takeover. And I went with sharpshooting simply because that 99.3 with 30 shooting badges and an increased green window is literally impossible to guard. If you get takeover on this build, the game is over. Now that we are done the build, we can see that we have built a sharp shooting facilitator, which is pretty accurate. Obviously, our defense is very good, and that is mentioned, but it's fine. We also are going to look at our player comparisons and see that the first person off the list is the man himself, Stephen Curry. So inspirational. So that's basically the build. This build is crazy, man. I've been using it for a while now, and it is a complete demigod. Basically, other than slashing, it does everything at an elite level. Everything you could ask for. It's like a pure sharpshooter from last year with defense, with playmaking. All right, now to give you guys the badges I use on this build, we have a lot of them, so it's definitely important that we utilize them. So for slashing, we only have one, and I go with contact finisher. I put this on because any layup attempt lower than 20% contested will almost always go in if you put this on. Slithery finisher isn't a bad idea either. Uh, maybe even fancy footwork. It's just the only issue with fancy footwork is that you can't really do any hop dunks on this build or any fancy layups. So I would just run with contact finisher. For shooting badges, my Hall of Fame badges are Catch and Shoot, Dead Eye, Green Machine, Difficult Shots, Quick Draw, Range Extender, and Volume Shooter. Now, if you are someone that uses a Hot Zone Hunter, you could probably take off Corner and Flexible Release, Drop Catch and Shoot, Drop Volume Shooter. Uh, that should work out. But really, just try your best to match your playing style. If you don't take moving shots, maybe you don't need Difficult Shots on Hall of Fame. Or if you don't shoot from the corner, maybe don't put Corner Specialists on. Um, just try to adjust whatever you do. It varies from person to person, so just try to maximize your badge setup the best you can. For the playmaking badges, this is my badge setup. The only thing I would suggest to you guys is remember to choose your badges that will also benefit your teammates. So if you're running with an inside center, there's no reason to have dimer. So maybe change that to like lob safe finisher. If you're running with a build that can shoot a bit, then obviously put on dimer and your teammates will thank you for that. All right, now for my defensive badge setup, on the 2v2 court this setup is pretty obvious but the only thing i will say is if you're playing a friend and you know they like the iso then take off pick dodger put on clamps on gold uh if there's somebody who only uses screens then obviously put pick dodger on gold uh maybe no clamps at all or clamps on bronze also, I use Interceptor on gold, which might be a little too high for some of your playing styles, but I use it because I'm ultra aggressive on the two's core inbound defense. But again, choose the badges that fit you and that will help you play the best defense. Alright, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this build video. Once you get used to this build, it is very fun to play on because you could literally make all kinds of ridiculous shots. Like I said earlier, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the live streams or other helpful videos I'm going to be dropping. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter at GamingJBT. And until next time, it's your boy JBT, and I'm out. Peace.